So we did cash that best bet yesterday on the Reds. That means my daughter gets to eat Skyline Chili this week. Unfortunately, it was not a 3-0 sweep, though. That's my fault. I lost my half of the double play. Of course. But 2-1 and one, each of the first three days on the show. That's pretty good. Still getting that 67% win percentage roll in there. Uh, and that also means, Mark Zeno, you're a perfect 3-0 and this week uh, with your half of the double play. So all the more reason yeah. for you to get us started in this game. Uh, Dodgers-Brewers, battle of NL uh, division leaders. Tobias Myers, another guy who you hate his name. Do you hate it more than Zebby? Although we learned some things on Twitter from Adam Trigger about our, our good friend Zebby. He like looked him up on Ancestry.com for Christ's sake. I think. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird and uncomfortable uh, how much he knew about a man named Zebby. So uh, I'm not going to to get involved with that. But uh, yeah, and to the guy who keeps Tobias. getting in our comments. Tobias. Yeah, the guy who keeps getting in our, in our comments section on uh, Wager Talk TV uh, about not getting it right every single day. Well, I have gotten the dub, our, our best bet, by the way. He's very upset. Our best bet doesn't hit every single day. Uh, just take my half of the double play. Did yesterday. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Uh, apologies to all those who, uh, who tailed yesterday. It was a very, it was a reminder that baseball just sucks to bet. Uh, not good. <laughs> Seattle blew a 2 nothing lead in the eighth inning, did not get the, uh, the win there. And the Orioles could not get a two out base hit with runners in scoring position to save their life yesterday as they landed on four team total four and a half, not going over, but we will bounce back today. Uh, to the guy in the comment section who said regression is coming. Yeah, thanks. I know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's get back. To would you Martin. like to insult everyone in the comment section today? <laughs> yes, I would. I, I, I want you guys oh. to know that I am in your comments. If you're in my comments, I'm in yours. Okay. This is an equal opportunity to show. Brian, you and I have a responsibility, okay, to take the wager talk and the morning wager audience and let them know that we are listening. Okay. We are better than most politicians. We hear you and we are here yes. for you but we will insult you back because you deserve it. So there is that. Okay, can we get back to Jack Flaherty now? All right, good. Yes, and uh, insult Tobias stars. Myers because you hate him. Well, I, I just I don't like the name. I, I mean, Tobias, you know, it's just not a name that I want, I want to get behind ever. Uh, so we're going to fade against Tobias because we don't like his name. However, Jack Flaherty this year um, obviously has been very, very good. But guess what? He's been better on the road than he has been at home. And that, even technically every road, is every start now that he's with L.A. is – Almost a road start. His first start at home in L.A., he gave up four runs to the Pirates. His first start against the Dodgers, the first start for the Dodgers uh, on the road. Yeah, you know what he did? Uh, six innings, five hits, no runs, seven strikeouts. So I like him in this spot here on the road. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, Milwaukee really uh, hasn't been scoring a whole ton in this series. It, it's kind of been, you know, alarming to see a little bit just because of how good they've been at home. Two runs in the first game, two in the second. Finally broke out last night. And got a five four win. They got they got crawled back in and after going down three nothing. So tip your cap to them. But they also weren't facing Jack Flaherty. So I'm going to go back Jack Flaherty here in the first five minus a half on the run line. Dodgers will continue to get an early lead. Tobias has been good. I can't can't argue that he hasn't been hasn't been a good pitcher to this point. I just don't like his name. Um, but his ERA is a little higher at home than it is on the road. No, by the way, he's made eight starts at home. He's 2-0. Oh. That means he's got six no decisions, which means he's not getting a lot of run support or he's getting rocked uh, and his team is coming back to, to, to bail him out. So I kind of find that helping us our case here for the Dodgers in the first five on the run line. The Dodgers, always a popular team to bet on. If you are rolling with Zeno there in the first five, smash that like button. We always appreciate the support here. On the morning wager, and yes, we love the comments, positive or negative. Keep them coming. Uh, I, too, looking to bounce back on this fine Thursday. One of the plays I lost with yesterday, Mark, was the A's team total over. They scored only one run. David Peterson, this guy is really starting to get high on my list of people I don't like. He's averaging over four walks per nine innings, yet he's allowed two runs or less in 10 of his last 13 starts. I don't understand that at all. But we're going to run it back today with the A's. This time. First five run line should be around even money to grab that half a run in the first five here. Once again, the A's are against the lefty. Okay. We know since July 1st, what they've done against lefties, number one in all of baseball, WRC 153. My goodness. And the A's, Mark, despite losing yesterday, they're 16 and 11, their last 27 games, 6 1 and 1, their last eight series. We've talked about it many times throughout the year, how they've 
uh, outperformed their very uh, low expectations for 2024. And it is another southpaw they're facing today. Quintana, 4.91 expected ERA for him, 4.50 xFIP. I don't like Quintana either. Uh, last time out, he gave up five runs and six and two thirds against the light hitting Mariners. So I think the A's can get the job done. I know Brett Rooker's out of the lineup. Uh, he's on the paternity list. So congrats to him. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a key absence out of the lineup, but I still think the A's can score enough runs here in the first five. And Mitch Spence, their starter, will handle the rest. He's allowed two earned runs or less in four consecutive outings. So A's first five run line plus that half a run is my half of the double play to go along with Zeno laying the half run in the first five with the Dodgers. Couple first five bets to get you started here on Thursday. Let us know what your favorite bets are for Thursday down in the comment section below. Uh, there is an NFL game as well today, Mark. The Patriots and the Eagles. These teams played in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Uh, Eagles. I think they. I think they could. What does that have to do with it? Why is that the reference point? It's a fact. It's a fact. I mean, I'm not saying the Packers and the Chiefs played in the Super Bowl. What? Well, that was the exact reference I was going to go to. Hey, Packers are playing the Chiefs. They played in the Super Bowl back in 1965. It was just a very odd reference. It was a very I don't know. I saw the matchup. I thought of the Super Bowl. Philly, I, and, and for Dan Alexander, of all people, no to be bird. upset with me for that reference in my ear, that's unbelievable because that had to be – what a great night that had to be for Dan uh, watching that game with the Philly special. The Eagles won. The e- he wept. He's telling me. He wept. He, 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 he's, but the I, I, Eagles – okay. I wept too. It's called vomit. Okay. Well, the Eagles – um, the Eagles, I think I had like the under in that game, which was a, a just a horrific bet. Uh, anyway, the yeah. Eagles, the, the Eagles, they could get back to the Super Bowl this year. I think I've got them winning the NFCs. The Patriots will not sniff the Super Bowl. Okay. I, I didn't say that. That's something you should get upset it's about. Just, you know, when we, preface, when we preface a game in the future, don't reference a game that happened seven years ago as the starting point. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it. Fine. Fine. Yeah. You know what? Erase this. I, I, I hope, I hope this I mean, just gets erased out of production. I mean, one of the, the biggest end, mistakes not, of my life, one of the point. biggest mistakes of my point. life was referencing right. these teams playing the Super Bowl, which I'm sure everybody oh, thought so of weird. when they heard this. Everybody. No, that's not what hey, you know what? No, not yes, it is. Down in the comments section, when I mentioned Eagles Patriots, let me know if you thought about when these teams met the Super Bowl seven years ago. I don't think it was seven years ago. I lived in this house. At that time, and I haven't lived in this house for seven years. And the comment section is littered with "Shut up, BP, you're a moron." Don't don't be surprised. I don't think anyone would say that. Twenty (laughs) seventeen. Twenty seventeen was the Eagles. It was. was, was, Thank you, Dan (laughs) Alex. Your daughter wasn't even born when they played in that Super Bowl. Uh, She wasn't actually. And happy yeah, birthday. What a nice well, – she had a nice birthday. By, by the way, technically it was six and a half years ago, but who's counting? <laughs> anyway, uh, now that we have uh, broken open our respective iCals here to, to discuss what we've been doing for the last seven years, the Eagles and Patriots do play in the lone preseason game. It, money's pouring in on both the Patriots and the over here. Despite the fact that there were some reports that the, the, in joint practices the Eagles were owning the Pats, is there anything uh, other than the fact that I should not reference past Super Bowls that you would like to uh, impart on our fine viewers, Mark? I mean, there is money coming in on the over. Uh, we saw a ton of unders come in in week one. So uh, we've often recommended in preseason to follow the money. Uh, it sits at 36 right now as the recording of this, guys. Um, you know, we're starting to get past, you know, numbers where, you know, the 37 is going to get very antsy, right? 20 to 17, mm. uh, kind of deal, 27, 10, you know, you're starting to get to a, a number that, you know, you can, you can hit a lot of ways. So, um, I, I don't have a real good feel for this side. Typically when these two teams practice against each other, what they don't do is play a lot of their starters. However, this second preseason game is the game that most starters are expected to play their most reps, right? This used to be the old pre- third preseason game when they had four of them where the starters mm-hmm. would play their longest. So part of me tends to think that the over makes a ton of sense. Uh, would love to have only played the first half because you know how I feel about the second half in preseason. But mm-hmm. I'm going to get a favorite at 17 and a half. I can't endorse betting the 17 and a half. It's just a, it's a bad way to go. 
um because 10 7 makes you a, a loser you, you need a, you need that fourth score uh which might not happen until early in the second half so i, I think you can bet the over for the game that's probably the way i'd lean uh and, and go down that road but uh no real strong feel on the side other than to say that the patriots are more likely to play their starters longer given that they are so young and that they're going to need some level of reps uh to get ready for the season that the eagles don't yeah nick sirianni uh who was not the coach for the eagles when they won that super bowl oh by the way i believe he said jalen hurts is even gonna play tonight yeah well there you go okay weren't we all anyway enough about that the nfl preseason game yeah i think the patriots have more to prove here obviously they're gonna stink this year and uh that you know if they've been getting dominated in practice they may want to uh do a little something in front of a national television audience it is now best bet time yesterday i don't know if you feel a little something special when you woke up this morning Zeno. please let's not go too far anywhere with that but the earth is back on its rotational access now that the cincinnati reds have matched the st louis cardinals record despite their disparate run differentials the reds in their rightful place second the nl central that was yesterday's best bet uh today we're looking at a big american league matchup texas has fallen out of contention right World Series winners last year. They're not. Can I mention the World Series last year? Is that okay? Yes. That they're the reigning World Series. Okay, that's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, They're not getting back to the World Series. Okay, they are not getting back to the World Series this year. They're not making the playoffs. The Minnesota Twins. I think the Rangers are embracing the buy and power philosophy of maybe it's just time to quit. Well, I hope not today because we're going to back them (laughs) as our show best bet on the money line against the Minnesota Twins, who likely are going to make the playoffs. Two pitchers in fine form here, Zeno. Ober for Minnesota. My goodness, he's been unbelievable his last six starts. But Bradford for Texas has been great. He, uh, you know, handed it to your Yankees last time out, held them to one run in five innings, seven strikeouts. Maybe some key absences in that Twins lineup. No Correa still. Buxton might be out. I personally don't think the Rangers should be a home dog, even though uh, they are not going to make the playoffs this year. Uh, I like Bradford quite a bit, and tell the people why else Texas should be uh, their best bet for Thursday. Well, situationally, let's just look at where Minnesota is right now uh, after what they just did. It was seven games between the Guardians and the Royals, who were at the chasing them for the top of the division here. All of those at home, so they're pretty emotionally spent after a last rough week against teams that they needed to play in high pressure, high playoff situations. So they're going away from Minnesota now, getting out on the road, a chance to sort of you know exhale a little bit against a Texas team that you know again it's just is still scuffling here. But here's the real rub of this: you talked about the starters here with Cody Bradford, um, the left-hander for the Rangers, who's four zero, hasn't lost yet on the year. A 3-6-0 ERA and a sub-1 whip, guys, at 0.93. Minnesota against lefties on the road this year, very middle of the road. Very, very average in batting average, OPS, and WRC+. Plus. Their strikeout rate is top half in the league against lefties on the road this year. Not that Bradford is necessarily this high K guy, so to speak, but the point simply being here is that they're going up against uh, the, the Rangers, whose lineup is very, very, I don't know, impotent, kind of needs a Viagra at certain points in time. But uh, Bailey Overs had a little trouble with the long ball. He's given up 18 home runs this year and 22 starts. His ERA on the road is almost two full runs higher than it is at home. Seven and one at home for Bailey Ober, five and four on the road in 12 starts here. So, um, you know, if the Texas lineup can get three or four runs here, feel pretty good uh, about their, their prospects of winning the game. Here's the real rub, and here's what you really need to worry about is just the Texas bullpen, right? They are an absolute gas can dumpster fire abortion. I mean, there's nothing good about the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Tell us bullpen. how you really feel. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I don't know why Brian Power and I didn't discuss taking this first five, but we're going to ride full game here with the Rangers. I mean, it, it, trust me, their bullpen is god awful. It's it's really bad. Um, and they were used heavily in that Rangers series because I'm sorry, that Red Sox series because two games went to extra innings in that series. Mm. Brian Power, we may regret this on Monday. I, I want to change midstream. Can I endorse first on Friday? Five? Uh, that's what I mean. Friday. Um, I, can I? Can I? Can we change the first five instead of full game? Why don't we take the bullpen out? All right, we'll take. All right, your official Mark Zinno has bullied me into it. Yes, our official show best bet is going to be the Rangers in the first five. By the way, uh, as you were talking about the rub and everything of that nature, and just 
absolutely defecating all over the Texas Rangers relievers. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to point out both the Rangers and Minnesota Twins can trace their franchise roots back to Washington as both teams yes. came into existence as the Washington, Washington Senators. Senators. Can I bring that yes. up? Yes. Yes, the, yes. the, the Twins uh, came into way, existence in 1901 and the Rangers oh. in 1961. Both were known as the Washington uh, Senators in those days. Okay, shut up. So put uh, that by the way, we're going to... Yes. <laughs> We're going to take the first five money line. Let's keep the tie in our back pocket in case the Texas bats continue to need a Viagra. So, okay. Good, nice mock. So, yeah. here, minus 112 in that range. Nice and easy first five money line for the Texas Rangers. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. Poor Dan Alexander. We're ruining his graphics. The man had to wake up early <laughs> on the West Coast to record us. What a treat that had to be for him. Anyway, if you have not already. Smash that like button on this show. My God, there, my God, don't hit a thumbs down. No, don't do that. I thought that was the thumbs, thumbs up. up. Sorry. That's, like, Sorry. that's oh, what we like. Yeah. That's what we like. That's what we like. We want that thumbs, thumbs up. Stuff. Yes. Yes. Do not adjust. Yes. Turn that thumb upside down. We want the thumbs up here. If you already haven't done so, obviously you don't like fun. Uh, and if you have not subscribed to the Wager Shock YouTube channel already, apparently you don't like information on how to bet because uh, nobody has you covered quite like the Wager Talk YouTube channel from sunrise to sundown, quite frankly. I'm going to have a special edition of the Power Five coming up, Zinno, on the Premier League season. I'm going to record that this afternoon. And I expect I, I that you're you, going I mean, to, li- I expect that you're going to listen to it and get back to me. I, I, I 100% will tell you I listened to it, but not actually do it. Um, okay. There you go. So, <laughs> unless you can find out which hey, of those views. At least I get that mom. view. At least I get the view. At that's least I get this. Not. Let it play I, all the way no, through, at least, while you're, you're not listening. Click, I will click on it and then walk out of the room and go do something more important uh, and watch your soccer stuff. Um, and I mean that because I love you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I'll watch it and not do it. So there is that. But, yeah. By the way, Brian Power, can I bring yes. up one thing that I found out this morning? You know who's number one If I one say no, it would be awkward. Football? You know who's number one in Major League Baseball this month? Not only in Gee, ROI. Let me guess. I don't know. Not him. <laughs> not him. Nope. 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 We, 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 a ROI, contender to the throne the has emerged. And and units, guys. Number one. Oh, it, ROI for Mark units. units. Baseball is. <laughs> there we go. Baseball's not a money line sport. Fight me. I don't care. Winning percentage. ROI. Oh, it is a money line sport. Unit size. <laughs> All right. Well, you should watch that Premier League episode of the Power Five because I am out of 33, 14, and two run in soccer. Ended last Premier League season with eight straight wins. So there you go. All right, Dan, thank you so much for putting up with us there uh, uh, in the production chair. We really appreciate it. We will be back Friday with another edition of the Morning Wager. Until then, uh, let's cash some tickets. <laughs>